All right, I didn't want to make a video today. This is a me day. I, I've got some thoughts I want to share, and I'm not the person necessarily to represent a movement. I am part of multiple different marginalized groups, but the biggest and most obvious one, I'm not, and I understand that. And that's why I've tried to not put my face on these issues, at least in video form, and have been trying to amplify other people's voices. But there's been a lot of takes from other people who look like me <laughs> that I, I really can't stand behind. And it really bugs me because I feel like so many people almost deliberately misinterpret the point of certain movements. So we have a day off Twitch. If you're unfamiliar, it was a movement started by a lot of marginalized creators on Twitch to get Twitch to stand up and make it more clear that they want to, you know, protect marginalized creators on Twitch, stop hate rates, and things like that. The goals that they were trying to achieve is to get Twitch to hold a roundtable with a group or multiple groups of marginalized creators, to have an honest discussion about proactive tool sets, to develop proactive protections that could protect creators and prevent these kinds of things from happening, remove the ability to attach more than three accounts to a verified email, that's a tangible specific step, which I don't see any reason couldn't be done, and provide transparency with time, time frame for implementing these tools. The core take that everyone seems to have here is that a protest on Twitch won't work. That is everyone's sticking point. That is the hill that everyone wants to die on. And I feel like everyone's definition of whether a protest works is so skewed and completely out of touch. This isn't the 1800s or the 20s where a protest or rather a boycott is going to have direct financial impact on any corporation. It's only ever going to affect a small local business or something like that in a way that affects the bottom line enough to provoke a response based on financial incentive. At no point is that ever a realistic objective. And if that's the only frame of mind you can operate in to consider a protest or a boycott of a specific company or a day off or what have you, then of course, that's all you're going to see. That's never going to work. And for example, Harris brings up points, that's, which is something that I was you know, bringing up as well, that subs renew regardless of whether you're live or not. Money isn't actually being taken from Twitch. However, that, that is a very transactional view to have of a protest or a boycott or whatever you want to call this movement. Uh, the movement isn't like... Generally speaking, movements on the whole are not this super transactional thing where it's like, we're doing this thing, and when we do this thing, we expect to get this direct, immediate result. Even the specific twit longer here, which I will have linked below, which details what their goals are for the movement on the whole, which started with Twitch Do Better. It's not just a day off Twitch. It's progress. It's not a direct, immediate, oh, bam, they Thanos snapped hate raids out of existence. We won kind of thing. It is progress. It is steps it is hearing the voices of the people who are crying out for protection or defense or support or acknowledgement. It is acknowledging those people. It is communicating in a more honest way. It's listening and it's making progress towards that objective. And before, before it's not September 1st yet, before the protests even happened, it has already worked. I don't understand how people can sit here and keep sharing perspectives of people who are saying it won't work when it has literally already worked. Twitch has already had a sit-down meeting with Wreck-It Raven and more seems to be coming from it in which an honest conversation was had and she seems very convinced that things are going to continue to progress forward. Now, it is 100% possible that they were just fed some corporate response that doesn't mean, you know, it just lip service that doesn't mean anything will actually happen. But the first step of making progress and being heard was accomplished. That's progress. A protest does not exist, or a boycott or whatever, does not exist in a vacuum. This is one step that was certainly not the first step here, and it won't be the last either. And so, for a response to have been provoked by the action of a group of people unifying together and calling for it, it has worked. It did work. It was already successful before it even began. Now, I think on principle, most people are still going to do the day off, and September doesn't even start until September 2nd. But the point was to get the attention, to unify voices, to raise awareness about this issue, and to get a response, and to get a sit-down, and to keep the com like to get a more direct conversation happening. And quite literally, that happened. It was a success. 
There is no metric by which you can say it doesn't work because it does work. The point was never to damage or hurt Twitch. And Devin Nash had a lot of really good points in his take on this about ways that you can do better to damage Twitch or to make a big deal for this protest. And I will address those in a minute because some of them I was sharing from day one and I highly agree with. But the core idea that he still focused on was ways to damage Twitch. I don't agree with these either. And he actually didn't agree with a lot of the takes in that everyone keeps suggesting that you just leave Twitch. That's not... <laughs> that's as short-sighted or missing the point of a non-solution as boycotting is. That doesn't hurt Twitch. Another streamer is always going to take your place. Another creator is always going to fill the void. <laughs> unless, unless literally every big streamer jumps off of Twitch at the same time, Twitch isn't going to notice. And guess what? That's the exact same argument that was posed about the protester boycott in the first place. Unless all the big streamers do it at once, Twitch isn't going to notice. Who knew? I just feel like some people are so out of touch because they don't listen. And it really bugs me. Leaving Twitch is a personal decision that you can make that will change your career. You don't get to just be like, I'm not streaming on Twitch today. I'm streaming on YouTube moving forward. And your career will just pick up exactly like it was. Not even bigger streamers like Dr. Disrespect have the same career that they had on another platform. He's made that very clear recently. And especially for smaller creators, especially for marginalized creators who already have a tougher time, just up and switching platforms is a self-detrimental action that you can take on principle and hope that you can rebuild based on that because you have reached a threshold where you can no longer support Twitch at all, but is a completely different kind of action than demanding change from the platform you want to keep using. Most of us do not want to see Twitch burn and die. What good does that do us? <laughs> Especially people who rely on Twitch. What good does that do us? It doesn't. What we want to see is Twitch to listen, to improve, and to change. And it's 100% possible, and pretty much every time community issues come up, it turns out Twitch does actually listen. They're just either really terrible at communication, or they're moving slow as molasses because they are a mega corporation, and they need the right bump to get the right people organized to make it a higher priority. Even as myself, a YouTuber with a lot of viewers, I get 10 times or more the viewership on a YouTube live stream than I do on Twitch, but for my casual streams for a variety of different things, I would rather stream it on Twitch nine times out of 10. My more structured shows like Streamer News and the like, 100% they belong on YouTube. That's where they go. I would happily multi-stream them to Twitch if Twitch would allow exclusivity. But my casual, hey, I want to live stream on a whim or I want to do game streaming or Pokemon card opening streaming or even just non-structured streaming, I want to stream on Twitch. I want to continue being a Twitch streamer even though... I have more viewership and an existing successful business model on YouTube. I can't imagine as a small streamer swapping platforms a ton. And actually, I, I say that, but I can because I did that a few times. As a smaller YouTuber and creator, I bounced between channels a couple times. I bounced between streaming platforms. And you always lose such a significant portion of your audience. Now, this is different today. And if you're bouncing between already established platforms, that's a little different than like new streaming services. But... You always lose or risk losing such a high percentage of your viewership and pretty much all monetization because you have to start over that at no point is that just an easy stick it to Twitch step that most creators can make. And I don't think it makes I, I, I don't think it makes sense to frame that as an alternative to a boycott or a protest and suggest that it's going to be more effective because you as an individual, if you don't matter as a protester, you sure as hell don't matter to just leave either. So that argument just doesn't make sense to me. I, 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 I don't know. In terms of alternate suggestions, I mentioned Devin Nash had some good points. I, I disagreed with a couple of the ways he approached certain things, including Asmund Gold uh, and his original video entirely. There are ways that you can implement controls that don't affect the new user experience for Twitch that gives people more power over their streams. Two-factor authentication being required for chat is very similar to follower or sub-only chat, but doesn't have to be follower or sub-only. It encourages normalization of 2FA on Twitch, which is important anyway, and it's a control that can be added that appeases people regardless without hurting anyone, and works for non-affiliates and non-partners, non which are still worth protecting as well. Machine learning, while obviously not a switch they can flip to implement, is still something they can implement to detect all the different variations of words because everyone just saying, oh, just use block list. There's a video I will point you to, hopefully linked in the description, that shows 
it's completely unfeasible to block all of the alternative forms of hate word spelling because it would take months and months of automated scripting processes to do it. You can't do it instantly. So machine learning to detect those and detect the Nazi and racist imagery in the profile pictures, which lots of websites already have, completely doable. And then, in terms of alternate ideas, again, my voice isn't the one that matters a whole lot right here, but personally, I think it would be more effective overall if everyone involved, especially because it could bring up people who weren't already streaming on that day. Because the, the weird criticism everyone keeps leveraging is that this is just streamers' way to manipulate a day off that where they can just not stream that day and then they shift their schedule and whatever. What if instead you got people together and you just streamed a big banner that says hashtag a day off Twitch has the bullet points of what you want to see accomplished and a link to a campaign page that says that you disable your alerts, your subs, whatever, for that day for 24 or 48 or even a week straight and maybe have it cycle between, you know, you could just do the static image or have it cycle with like interviews of people who have already talked about this and the like. I think that would be incredibly effective. Like, because the idea, the argument being posed of everyone who, or, you know, of a bunch of creators who don't have a big enough impact can't get Twitch's attention. If you have a bunch of streams filling the live pages that just have their title set to a day off Twitch or Twitch do better would probably be more appropriate there and streaming those banners there that will get everyone's attention like especially if you have enough streams doing that because you can involve people who weren't going to stream anyway like for me to say I'm not participating in a day off Twitch would be like everyone loves to throw this word around and most people don't know where, what it means but that would actually be virtue signaling because I was never going to stream on September 1st it was never a plan that I would have so me saying that I would participate in it or me participating in it is completely useless because I was inherently not going to stream on September 1st to any platform, nevertheless to Twitch. And I've already effectively, between the hate raids and the gambling and the other stuff, I've effectively taken indefinitely off of Twitch already, and I've been talking about that recently before a day off Twitch came up. Me not doing that doesn't help anyone. Me actually streaming to Twitch to raise awareness about it, keeping in mind, like some of the arguments were that that just gives more ad revenue to Twitch, and theoretically, but ads running on streams that not very many people are seeing doesn't do much because like people aren't going to stick around and keep watching the same banner over and over and so we're going to have a bunch of channels that have it that don't necessarily have a ton of viewerships or either everyone gathers on like one big stream to boost it up in the pages or something but, like that is an actual productive suggestion that i was calling for a few days ago and now devin ash is calling for if you want an alternative route to support it that i can 100 percent back but i don't understand how you can sit here and say that it won't work when it has literally already worked without just like, not even, uh, this isn't meant to be insulting or, like, combative, but I truly just believe people misunderstand the point. The point is not to just hope that this one day off Twitch damages Twitch and then forces them to get rid of hate raids. It's to get their attention, to unify voices, to amplify voices, and to make progress happen, which has literally already happened. It did work. I don't, I don't have a conclusion here. I, like I said, I didn't even want to be someone who directly spoke on this without having other people's voices involved. I've been trying to amplify what I can on Twitter and be involved there in those discussions, but seeing so many people who, again, look exactly like me, putting their faces there for videos, being dismissive of it and shutting it down. And that's my big thing. Saying it won't work is in immediately writing it off, being dismissive in a way that most people like hearing that who aren't familiar with it, they're just like, oh, okay, and they'll move on and not want to learn more. Saying it won't work is always going to be counterproductive to the cause. Like literally saying it at all is counterproductive. There is no point to saying that. You are not helping anyone by saying that. Saying this might work better, have you considered this? Or here are some, e even just wording it like here are some challenges you may face is more productive than that's stupid, that won't work, etc. I... I'm really disappointed in a lot of the streaming community right now. And I know this because of the, I guess, conflict back and forth, mainly started by one person who doesn't need to be named again, but whatever. Uh, because of the conflict back and forth, I think this is, in a sense, and this is going to sound not how I meant it, but like it has been kind of blown up to sound bigger than it needs to be in terms of the disagreement about it. But at the same time, I feel like it's not hard to just listen and amplify voices instead of giving your gut reaction to something. Like, to stop, consider, consider the context, consider, like, listen to what's actually wanted. Because literally, if you go read what they want, what, what was hoped to have been achieved by a day off Twitch, 
that has been achieved. All you had to do was listen to it, and it you realize it has been achieved. And your statement that it won't work is completely null and void. And thus only can be hurtful, because it's literally wrong. And so like I said, I'm just very disappointed in a lot of the streaming scene of people who just want to give their gut reaction to things without taking the time to think or to listen or to just shut the hell up and get out of the way and let other people's voices shine. Your voice is not the only one that matters. If people are fighting for a cause that you aren't directly involved in, your voice probably isn't the one that needs to be heard, which is, like I said, why I didn't want to make this video. You should be listening to or amplifying the voices of those who do. Oh, no. These videos never do well. You all usually get pissed at them, but I had some thoughts I wanted to share. Have a great rest of your weekend. Hope to potentially see you all not streaming on September 1st, I guess, or either streaming a cool banner. We could get that going. I think that would be really effective, and I think channels who leave Twitch or, like, who want... I don't know. There, there are options there, and I, it just feels so disconnected to hear people say, we'll just leave Twitch when I know how much sacrifice that involves. Like, that is, that is the corporate, like, meat shielding, effectively, because you're you're telling the people who are affected by this to harm themselves, not physically, literally, but, you know, harm their careers to put the the impetus of inconvenience or, you know, just about any streamer who isn't mega huge leaving Twitch right now. I don't care if you've got one concurrent viewer or 2,000 concurrent viewers. You leaving Twitch really isn't going to have a significant blip on the bottom line of a mega corporation. You're just not. And yet it will have all of the major impact on yourself. That's not a win. If you want to be a Twitch streamer and you just want Twitch to be a better place or a, a safer place for you so you can continue to do your thing, leaving Twitch isn't a win. You haven't won with that. You've lost. You've literally given up and lost. And yes, overall, if it's affecting your life that deeply and streaming is that important to you and you cannot win with this, eventually, yeah, you'll just, if you want to continue streaming, you'll probably have to move platforms. That's how the market works. Like, you will have to adapt for yourself. But you don't just, ad like, I, I think the misconception people have is that adapting means immediately shifting without fighting for change. Adapting means if all else fails, yeah, you can move on and you can still survive and thrive on another platform. Immediately jumping without doing anything to really fight for change or to par participate instead of shutting down conversations fighting for change, that's not adapting. That's just running away. <laughs> like... If you're on Twitch and you're like, wow, I don't like the, how this is going, and then you don't really do much or put in the effort, especially to then complain about other people not willing to put in the effort to impact change, to just be like, yo, I don't like how this is going. Wow, it's not getting any better. All right, I'm just leaving. And then telling other people who want to fight for the change that they're doing it wrong. You have done no effort for change. You have ran away from the problem, and you have the ability to do so because you're presumably more privileged in that case because you have the viewers that will come over or you're in a safe enough position that you're willing to start over and the assumption that everyone has here that the people who are fighting for change on twitch are completely and entirely reliant on dependent on twitch is mind-boggling as well most people in this day and age especially streamers who are established know that they need to not have all their eggs in one basket know that they need to invest in other forms of funding and the like that doesn't mean that they're not still in some way dependent on their primary platform where their primary audience is. I have a big following on Twitch. I have decent sub base of supporters on Patreon. I have a very nice pop in Discord server that I love more than anything. I have Nebula. I have my Twitter following, which is growing quite nicely. Quite a decent TikTok following, Instagram. And then I have my YouTube channel. And while I have all these other things... It is still a major freaking deal if my YouTube channel disappears or if it starts being taken away from me or I can't use it. I'm still going to fight tooth and nail for every last minute to keep it because that's what I put all of my last X years of work into and where my core audience is. People just blow my mind. People just blow my mind.